One, two, three, four. Four percent. That's about what you get when you divide the weight of an average Estonian by the weight of an average Ford F-150. Four percent is the shockingly small percentage of a vehicle's forward motion, forward energy, that actually works towards moving the person that needed moving in the first place. Obviously, this is kind of absurd when you think about the fact that we built our entire city to be built around the car. But we could have kept it simple and built it for humans in the first place. But we're so paved over, what does it matter? Well, I think there's a way to build walkable, energy efficient Houston inside the loop. And I want to talk about the how and the why. So if you're interested, stay tuned. It's about to get naughty. So why is the current Texas transportation paradigm problematic? Well, I wanted to give three good reasons. They're not easy to hear, but I think they're important to state. So the first reason is that reliance upon such large volumes of energy to move us around makes us overly reliant upon energy, and this reliance makes us vulnerable to shortages of energy. The second reason is that emissions caused by internal combustion engines, or by power plants, or by refineries, emit noxious gases that cause a whole host of health problems. And the third reason is that car-reliant suburban sprawl is a tremendous waste of land. No other urban form consumes so much land, and the endless suburbs destroy a very valuable resource. Anyway, I hope that you view these, pro these realities as problems. Um, and if you do, I want to suggest a solution. For my part, I believe that Houston's best option for energy efficient travel inside the loop lies with bicycles. Bikes can take you directly from point A to point B the same way that a car does. In this car oriented town, bikes will be able to effectively mirror current transportation patterns. And in terms of energy efficiency, bikes are second to none. What do I mean by that? Well, if you take a look at the front pedals here, if they spin once, your rear gears are gonna spin three times, roughly, on this bike. So that's one multiplier in and of itself. Your second multiplier is the distance between the rear gears and the rear wheel. This distance here multiplies the distance over which you can travel. Between these two properties, this is how a bike magnifies your energy input. The plain physics of a bicycle isn't as flashy as a car, but since there are significantly less moving parts, there's significantly less energy loss due to mechanical function. And since 56% of the mass of a person on a bike is in the person, biking by its nature will be much more energy efficient than using a car where most of the energy goes towards moving the car itself, not the person. Moreover, any discussion about energy efficient travel must include the usual spiel. Bikes are clean, energy efficient, and they use renewable energy. A cycling urban Houston won't have to worry about what the price of gas is, or if it's contributing to climate change, or if it can even generate enough power to move the city around. Cycling really is the green and virtuous way to get around urban Houston. Now what I'm not saying is that we should get around 100% by bicycle and we should all run around like chickens with our heads cut off. No. So what I'm saying is that Houston has the fundamentals to be a great cycling city inside the loop. We have a tight interconnected street network with a fine mix of uses and it's rapidly getting denser and denser. That means that destinations are getting closer and closer. Moreover, we have great bayou trails like this one here, the Wide Oak Bayou Trail. These are bike highways that connect neighborhoods together. When you look at travel patterns inside the loop, transportation engineers have determined that about 50% of all trips inside the loop are three miles or less. Think about that. That's a bikeable distance and especially e-bikeable distance. 
truly, we can bring this energy efficient mode of transportation online if we just put our minds to it and invest a little bit of time and energy.